Okay, so we have uh, finished our first print, and as you can see, basically what I did was I transferred the watercolor that was on the wooden plate onto the paper, just going back and forth. And I used a couple of uh, items, mostly my hand, my fingers, to rub the paper and then check and see how much watercolor had transferred. Uh, using this process you can get very light, delicate tones. If you want a more saturated color, you still have to do it over a series of impressions, but you can use either a wooden spoon or a metal spoon and you would burnish the back of the paper. And the more layers you put in there, the more saturated the image is going to be. Uh, the other thing that I've done, besides registering and making a a hinge so that I go back and forth is that I actually put tape on the back of the jig so that once I drop the plate in it's not moving around. The nice thing about doing the white line is that you still have the other side of the plate to do another uh, another image. So the tools are quite simple. Carving knives a V gouge and even a U gouge will work. It depends on your style of carving. These work very well. Uh, you need some brushes and what's nice is to have a small thin brush as well. The larger brushes help when you have the large areas. I used a, this is a very inexpensive watercolor palette uh, so I just have to build up the image several times. Uh, the other thing I've discovered is a type of paper that you want to use would be a paper that has, uh, is very absorbent and is also strong enough to take the multiple impressions and rubbings that you're going to do on the back. And over a period of uh, time as you build up the image, it, you may start noticing the water coming back through. So it's time to stop, let it dry out, and then try it again. So I worked on this last night. I finished this far and I'm going to finish completing the rest so that I have my gradation on this side of the image. And I may actually add a little bit more highlights in here. But that's pretty much uh, the extent of working with the white line. Yeah, again, it's called white line or Provincetown prints.